Hey everyone, Austin here again with a quick play. It's been a little while in terms of this <laughs> video format. Um, been a little out of it these last few weeks, needless to say, but I think I'm finally back in the groove or getting back in the groove. And uh, today we're gonna get back into that groove with uh, Chuck Rock. This is the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive version of the game. Uh, you know, what actually kind of got me back into this game is it was one I played as a kid, but on Super Nintendo is I had, uh, when I was sick back in November, I had decided to try the Sega CD version and legitimately try to get as far into it as I could. Uh, I ended up finishing the game and multiple times uh, on that. And uh, so that, that got me trying other versions of the game and checking out other versions that I don't have direct access to. Like I looked up a long play of the Amiga original, I, I checked out uh, what the Super Nintendo version's like again, and then I also played through the Sega Genesis version, which we have right here. And um, lots of interesting differences between the, the two, or all the versions really, but especially the Genesis and the Sega CD version. I never realized how, how big of an enhancement the CD version is. Now, I decided to do a, a, a playthrough of the Genesis version because it is a little bit shorter. This should take us less than 30 minutes. The Sega CD version has like an extra 20 minutes worth of levels and content. It's, it's kind of crazy how much extra stuff is in that version. Um, but yeah, we're gonna roll through the Genesis version for those of you guys that haven't played Chuck Rock or you haven't seen it in a while. Um, you know, this playthrough should give you a taste of what the game's like. Uh, overall, I think it's actually a really fun game, especially once you get used to it. But uh, it does have some of your typical Euro, Amiga, Atari ST-esque design choices. You know, things falling from the ceiling that you don't see until it's way too late. And uh, tiny, tiny little enemies that are about a fraction the size of your character that are extremely difficult to hit. And they just pop up out of nowhere and hurt you. And and kind of like obtuse things like uh, when you go underwater, you don't really know that you're about to drown until you look at your, your character's head icon, but that's it's, it's there's a lot of stuff that's like, it's not obvious at first, but you eventually get the hang of it. Um, but yeah, I'll try to explain all that stuff as we go. So um, let's go ahead and uh, hit the start button here and check out our options. Not many options here. In the CD version, you do actually have uh, passwords and whatnot, but in this one, you just have two simple sound options and that's it. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and uh, just hit start game and we get thrown right into the game. So Chuck Rock is a uh, side-scrolling action platformer. So it is platforming, you do collect stuff, um, but you also attack stuff too. So that's why I personally call them action platformers. Some platformers you just literally run around and collect stuff. <laughs> it's not as much uh, action and stuff like that. So, but Chuck Rock is definitely one where you have to kill lots of things. Uh, you have two attacks in this game. You've got your belly, uh, which you just do by pressing uh, the B button standing on the ground. Uh, we're actually not going to use it that much. Uh, one thing I see uh, talked about with Chuck Rock a lot is like, Oh, your main attack is so stupid. Ah, blah, 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 blah. The reality is you need to get used to your jump kick. So you just press B in the air to do a jump kick. The reason for that is the jump kick has a massive hitbox and it comes out very, very quickly. We're talking like Ninja Gaiden NES quickly. Um, <laughs> it's probably the first time you'll ever hear someone compare Chuck Rock to Ninja Gaiden, but you're gonna be hearing that comparison probably a lot over the course of this, this, this playthrough. Um, and you're gonna, you're gonna be seeing me jump kicking a whole lot in this game. And uh, you can also actually grab these uh, these stones. Uh, you've got these uh, thin ones, which uh, allow you to continue to walk fairly quickly. Uh, they can also block stuff from hitting you in the head, which is kind of nice, actually. It's kind of a fun mechanic. Um, but also, actually, let me come down here, duck, and grab this big stone, just like that. And I'm gonna actually try to come up here, get some point icons. Uh, those uh, meat and, and other sorts of icons that you can pick up, uh, they give you the majority of your score in this game. Now, you do get extra lives, I want to say every 100,000 points or something like that. And um, so picking up your point icons is very important. I don't remember if you actually get continues or not. If anyone wants to verify that, uh, feel free to uh, drop a comment down below and let me know. Um, but I actually haven't gotten a game over in this in uh, quite some time, so I don't even remember if you if you continue in this game or not. I have a feeling this is one of those games where you get no continues and you're shot back to the title screen. But uh, don't quote me on that, because again, I haven't had to continue in some time. So, 
But yeah, the uh, the big stones is uh, they they sort of weigh you down, but they uh, you can use them as stepping stones, and you can get up to higher places. There are a few different areas in the game that are designed around the stones and dropping the stones in a certain order in order to uh, get to a, a higher platformer or high platformer, <laughs> a higher platform. But yeah, we're just gonna jump kick our way through most of this game. Just look at look at that hitbox, like that uh, that flying enemy. Uh, there was there was a distinguishable gap between my character and the enemy itself. Yet I still killed the enemy. So, you know, jump kicking is insanely good in this game. And you know, for anyone that kind of like was a naysayer about this game, I might recommend revisiting it with a different mindset, like like the don't use your belly mindset. <laughs> and, and it's not to say that you shouldn't use the belly, it's like, it's actually also useful, um, but, you know, it, for most of the game, you should probably be jump kicking. And for one, the, you know, the combat becomes faster, you're not stopping in place every five seconds. Uh, you can keep that nice fluid momentum like you do in Ninja Gaiden for NES. Um, and uh, it just becomes really fun when you start just slicing and dicing your way through lots of enemies really quickly. And you also have a lot of flexibility uh, with the jump kick as well. So not only can you attack enemies as you jump up and kick, um, but you can literally fall on top of enemies. If you time it right, uh, you'll actually basically drop kick the enemies from a, from a higher uh, platform, which is, which is nice, or higher uh, location on the screen. So... I mean, there's a lot of benefit to the jump kick in this game. Now, we are actually getting uh, close to the boss fight. I think we only have a couple of uh, small stages here, and uh, and then we should be at the boss. Every level has a boss. Some bosses are way, way worse than others. <laughs> the first two bosses are actually really easy, and, um, and as you will see once we get to them, the third boss is uh, probably one of the worst bosses in a classic action platformer, at least on consoles. Um, I, <laughs> I'm sure there's probably a lot worse on actual, uh, you know, the actual Amiga platform, other games that maybe weren't ported to consoles back in the day. Um, yeah, just something about Euro uh, game design is they could be, uh, they're, they're, you know, games, and it's not even just Euro, I mean, uh, games developed in, you know, North America were we're guilty of the same a lot of times. Um, uh, there's just, they, they could be very, very cheap and extremely unfair and um, and not give you really the tools, uh, the proper tools needed to deal with the situations they put you in. And some of the boss design in this game is just like that. Uh, the stage three boss in particular. And actually here's a part where we have to throw a rock on top of a rock. Um, now these rocks will despawn, I found out. And if you ended up missing a higher up jump and you come back down here, uh, the rocks will have disappeared, or at least this top one. And uh, you might have to force yourself to take a hit to damage boost your way up. That is unfortunately um, something that happens at least at a couple moments in this game. It's not a lot, but you do have to be aware that that can happen. Uh, if you don't do some of your, your platforming just right, you may have to take force damage just to uh, get to where you need to be. So what we do is on the first phase there, uh, or the first cycle, we basically just wait for him to come forward and then go back, and then we grab our rock, and then we just get ourselves into a nice little, uh, little cycle here. Let me just get down, grab rock, come back up here. Whoops. Let's try this again. And again, have to be a little quick about it. All right, there we go. All right, so stage one is down. All right, second set of levels. So more gimmicks introduced here. Um, lots of objects, lots of foreground objects that kind of block your uh, your view. So that is something that you've got to get used to. Now, I don't really need to be carrying this rock. Uh, it's not really doing me a whole lot of good, but one nice thing about carrying the big rocks in particular is that they do slow you down. Uh, let me finish. <laughs> is they, they, they slow your pacing down, and uh, that can actually help uh, anticipate other hazards coming up. Uh, do you notice that Chuck actually moves fairly quickly for a big, hulky caveman? 
um, chubby caveman, uh, he actually moves pretty quickly. And, uh, sometimes that can be a detriment to you. You can actually end up, you know, oops, I messed that up, and that's okay, not a big deal. Uh, there's some point icons over there, and again, point icons are, are the best for building your score, and if you want those extra lives, uh, you definitely want to grab as many as you can. And you know what? This rock may have reappeared. Let's go ahead and just double check that real quick. And if it has, I'll go ahead and try it again. If not, I'll just uh, move back to the right. And it has not reappeared, so I, I really don't think I can get this. It's... Oh, you can get it! Just barely. But there we go. We got uh, about 2,000 points for that. So, again, we're actually close to an extra life right now. We have 98,000 for what it seems like. So, that was actually worth it. Bottom right is my, uh, my life counter. We have three lives. Now, one thing that is uh, kind of a bummer about this version is... Um, because it has a whole lot less content than in, say, the Sega CD version, uh, you have less room for, or less opportunities for extra lives. I think you might only get about two extra lives over the course of an entire playthrough. And that's with playing pretty well and grabbing almost everything that you can in the game. So you don't have a lot of opportunities for survival in this game. Even when you collect everything. So, you know, you definitely want to collect as much as you can just to have that extra wiggle room. Some of the later parts in the game do get uh, quite challenging. For this part right here, what we want to do is wait for these rocks to fall and then kind of jump over. We can also grab this uh, this rock right here, and then these things will actually just bounce off of our head. Now, what I actually noticed earlier by doing one uh, practice run is that those rocks will actually hit the ground, and then their hitboxes are no longer active. So you can, I think, you can sort of walk through them, which is kind of interesting. Let's see if we can uh, jump across here. Got it, nice. Would have been easier if I grabbed the small rock at the same time. You can actually stack the rocks together. I'm gonna drop this down here. Um, so we got these uh, these little flames that come out of the, uh, the fire. Again, those are like some of the tiny little surprise enemies I was talking about at the very beginning of the video that you kind of have to know about. They will catch you off guard the first time you play and it will be frustrating. It, it just, it is what it is. Um, but it's one of those things that you, you kind of learn um, how those enemies work, when they're going to come out, and then they're not so bad to deal with. There is... <laughs> of course, I, right as I'm saying that, I get hit by other surprise ones I completely forgot about. So there you go. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and grab that health. There is a lot of health in this game, as long as you're playing you know, moderately safe, uh, you know, it's, the game's actually not that hard, because there, there, you have so much room for error in this game. You know, you get so many health refills and things like that. Alright, let's see if we can, uh, grab this. Again, look, look at that. So that, that was two health refills, or, they're technically partial refills, but still, um, two partial refills in about 30 seconds, so that's kind of what I'm talking about. Let's go ahead and grab this. This part is a little more difficult if you don't grab the rock. Again, as you can see, I'm just jump kicking my way to victory. The music in this game is actually pretty fun, too. Uh, I do prefer the Sega CD soundtrack. Um, there's some, like, really good stuff in that game, and it holds up so well, too, surprisingly. A lot of, uh, early 90s, uh, video game CD music is... Oftentimes, it doesn't hold up the best. Um, poor drum samples, you know, uh, you know, uh, cheap synthesizers, things like that. Um, uh, and sometimes just boring music, you know, very simplistic stuff. But Chuck Rock is like a very detailed soundtrack with synths that hold up really well. And um, it's very funky. It's uh, it's really good stuff. Um, I want to listen to that soundtrack right now, actually. The, one of the problems with the Sega CD version, however, is that every time there is a level transition, uh, the music restarts. Um, and so... You know, a lot of times you don't actually get to hear the whole track, and a lot of the tracks don't really start busting out until you've already finished the level. Uh, so that is that is the uh, the biggest problem with the Sega CD version is the music's just constantly stopping. 
which is a bummer. I really wish uh, the devs had, uh, you know, worked around that. That said, going back to the Genesis version, this soundtrack is also, you know, quite solid too. And for this boss, you want to just get him in the corner and then just sort of stun lock him with jump kicks. Just sit in place, and just time your jump kicks. Now, his uh, initial movement is erratic. He kind of goes back and forth randomly. I got really lucky there, and he just went immediately to the left. So... Well, alright, this is probably uh, what I would call the toughest uh, level in the game. Um, I mean, it's, it's it could be a fairly chill level if, if you take your time, but you are constantly underwater. Uh, which means you're not like solidly in place. You're constantly like trying to float upwards and downwards and your movement is not uh, It is not uh, It's not perfect. That's for sure it takes a while to get used to and then now you also have the uh, the underwater breathing mechanic uh, So as we go underwater, you'll notice that Chuck's head in the bottom right hand portion of the screen starts turning blue and once it fills up blue completely uh, you do die and you lose a life instantly. So ugh. as if this game really needed a mechanic like that. It has one <laughs> But uh, it could be tricky to attack your enemies like to be accurate with attacking your enemies uh, in the underwater sequences here So it could be I think this is this is probably like the first real big difficulty spike for for new players And even me when I come back to this game and I play this it still takes me a while to get used to uh, attacking enemies underwater. Like, that, you know, they're underwater creatures. They have a tendency of bouncing around and stuff like that, especially, like, the, the lobsters. Um, you know, they can be very frustrating because they're just bouncing all over the place, and you're bouncing all over the place, too, because of just how Chuck operates underwater. So, it can just be uh, a little... A little aggravating to deal with and get good at so but we'll just kind of see how things go my big worry on this level is not so much the level itself uh, because there are some good health refills and things like that but it's it's the boss fight like I was talking about earlier so we will see what happens the boss is uh, very very fast in this oops I picked up the rock and I didn't want to pick up the rock All right, let's come back up get some air grab some points we're gonna come down here real quick I do like to try to take out all as many enemies as I can if possible, but as you can see, like I'm taking a lot of damage getting hit by the enemies because they're a little erratic and, and the hitboxes on the tiny enemies in particular seem to be a little off. Um, I keep missing on like the tiny, tiny blue fish, even though it looks like I should have hit them, but so, you know, on one hand, it's like I like to kill everything I see because um, it gives me points. You know, and I want to build my score as high as I can so I can get those extra lives. Like we're at, uh, I'm guessing, 183,000 points right now, so we're actually getting close to our next extra life again. So, and I'm going to go ahead and just grab this rock here. Pretty handy. Yeah, so some more comparisons to the Sega CD version, just for anyone that hasn't really seen the CD version. And you guys might actually see it. I might do uh, a dual play, uh, which is basically a side-by-side -side long play comparison video. It's very simple. I just I, t I take two playthroughs, and I, I, I get them to sync up mostly, and I put them side-by-side. -side. I do them once in a blue moon. Um, with games that are kind of easy to do it with, like my last one I think was Street Fighter 2, so it was pretty easy to crank out two runs of Street Fighter 2, but I think I might do that with Chuck Rock and uh, do it with the Sega CD version, maybe even do it with the Super Nintendo, we can talk like, call it like a tri-play or something like that. <laughs> uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, I'm an idiot. I stayed underwater way too long, I just completely sacrificed a life because I got distracted talking about uh, a dual play concept <laughs> of Chuck Rock. Um, but yeah, I might do that. Uh, that could be interesting. Uh, people would get to see uh, the whole playthrough of the Sega CD version. Um, or I might just do like a, a, a Sega CD live stream, like a variety stream, and then just play through the whole game on that stream. Uh, we'll see. I'm not sure yet. Um, but yeah, again, I, I decided to choose the Genesis version for this playthrough because it was shorter. Uh, I do prefer the Sega CD version, and going back to comparisons, uh, there's some really interesting enhancements in that version. First off, the sound is obviously CD audio, that's that's a given. Um, but all the sound effects are driven 
uh, by the Sega CD's sample-based hardware. Um, so all the sound effects sound way better in the Sega CD version. Um, they don't sound like Genesis sound effects. Um, now a lot of Sega CD games still use the Genesis sound hardware for sound effects. And so it was always kind of a mixed bag on, on sound quality on Sega CD titles, but I found that the core design titles in particular, um, pretty much all of them only use the uh, Sega CD internal sound hardware. So the sounds sound really good. Um, second, uh, the color palette's been completely reworked and everything looks a lot nicer in the Sega CD version, even though it's probably still within the same color palette limitations. Uh, as the Genesis version, they're, they're just using a different palette. It just looks nicer. It's just the, the color usage is, is better, um, to my eyes anyway. Um, then there are more layers of background scrolling. You notice that there's like only one flat background here. And here's our, here's our crazy boss I was talking about. Uh, he's just constantly bouncing back and forth. It's insanely difficult to do this without taking damage. And, uh, I hate this guy with a passion. I don't usually hate things in video games, but this is one of those things I do. <laughs> Notice that I was kind of like constantly trying to bounce back and forth and stay somewhat away so I could, you know, utilize my big hitbox to kill him, but his movement is so fast, he shoots projectiles, and he he throws uh, <laughs> other uh, water-based enemies at you at the same time. There's just too much going on um, for how limited Chuck is. But yeah, again, going back to the Sega CD version, there, there's multiple layers of background scrolling that you don't have in the Genesis version, so the background effects are much more appealing, uh, which is actually kind of interesting to me, because it's not like the Genesis couldn't do that. I mean, just look at Sonic the Hedgehog and stuff like that. Um, also, we have to watch out for these falling stalactites. Uh, these will catch you off guard if you're moving along through this level way too quickly. Um, but yeah, overall, the CD version is just really awesome, and I highly recommend it. Then again, the biggest problem is the fact that it uh, it constantly resets the music. So unless you're in a, a bigger level like this, um, where uh, it takes a little more time to get through it, you're not going to be hearing as many of the tunes unless you're just kind of sitting still and you've got the game paused or something like that. So, all right, one of the biggest threats in this level, though, is uh, the the snowball guys. And uh, so, ideally, you want to try to take those guys out first if you see them. Also, these bouncy green dudes that are shivering. Um, not very fun to deal with. They actually take two hits. You'll notice that most enemies in this game have taken one hit so far. Um, but uh, the, these green guys take two. And so, they can be a little awkward to deal with. What will end up happening is if you're too close, you'll hit them. Uh, you'll do the first hit that's necessary. And... Um, you end up taking a, a hit before you've actually killed them completely because their hitbox is just still fully active even after you've done one hit to them. So, well, that was a surprise enemy. He was he was behind this object. I couldn't see him. Again, that is something you have to get used to and you have to be aware of when you're playing this game. Uh, that, that design philosophy was very common in Western developed games back in the day, unfortunately. Um, Maybe a controversial mindset for some people, but for me, uh, a lot of Western developed games were style over substance, and um, weren't really thought out as well as uh, a lot of the Japanese titles that, you know, we grew up with back in the day. And, um... You know, in Japanese titles, it's there's the the foreground mechanic where like it blocks your view and blocks enemies is much less prevalent. Uh, you see that much less often there because they valued the player being able to see what they're actually doing. Um, so, and and not have the games be a complete trial and error fest. So, but again, it is something you kind of get used to, and some Western developed games do it way worse than others like, play Battle Squadron on the Genesis or Mega Drive, ugh. <laughs> you can't see what you're doing half the time in that game. Um, Chuck Rock, they, you know, I don't mind it too much, you, you do get used to it, and it's not like you, you can only see what you're doing, like, 10% of the time, it's... it's... not too bad. Although, you know, as I'm, as I'm complaining about it, I am starting to get screwed over by it quite a bit. 
Um, like I, I, I went down and got got hit by that tiny little woolly mammoth that was hiding behind a snowman. So maybe it is worse than I'm making it like than I'm actually uh, making it out to be. But uh, oops, got hit by another stalactite. That's my fault for not taking my time. And there's another snowman, not snowman, but snowball guy. Uh, let's actually come up here first, because I uh, and another stalactite. I'm moving too quickly. Man. Now, I only did one practice run of this game um, before doing this playthrough, and that was the first time I had fully gone through the game in, a, in over a month. So, you know, needless to say, I'm not as well practiced at this as I would like to be, uh, at least on these later levels. And I got trolled by my own rock. So, there are some times where you don't want your rock in your hands. You just you'd want to... You'd rather have the flexibility of the fast jump kick, especially with these fast enemies, but I do want to keep pushing my rock forward so I can get to higher platforms, and apparently I don't actually need it, so never mind. <laughs> Alright, Stalactite, and another one right here. Go ahead and get rid of Snowball Guy first. I do want this health. And let's see, let's go ahead and come down here, get those points. All right, so the next boss actually isn't going to be that bad. But he does have a pattern you need to learn. Otherwise, you're going to take a lot of unnecessary damage and you will die. Which, obviously, you don't want that to happen. And here we go. What we want to do is uh, just smack him in the face a couple times and he's going to shoot some snowballs down. We want to move to the left-hand side of the screen uh, for the second set of snow. Just wait in the middle, go to the left. And he always sucks you forward. And as long as you're holding left, uh, you actually won't take any damage from that. Now, you don't actually take any damage right away. Um, nice, getting three hits. Usually, I would just get two hits and then let the, uh, the cycle rinse and repeat. There we go, we got it. That was pretty good, actually. All right, on to level five, which is our final set of levels. This uh, this last uh, backing tune is like really catchy. I really enjoy it. It's very funky. Uh, so these uh, kind of chubby little slow green guys that I just killed, they make uh, angels appear. Sometimes uh, little devils appear and they come after you and they attack you. So just like that. So you've got to kind of be on point with those guys. Otherwise, uh, you will get hurt by them. All right, I'm not going to make that jump, so I'm going to come down here, grab that item, and there's another one. Go ahead and take this big rock, jump back up here. Oh, it looks like I actually will make that. I mis misjudged that jump. Oh, there we go. That was a little devil. And there you go. You saw me. I landed right on top of that bone dog with my jump kick. I just literally landed right on top of it. So, again, the jump kick in this game is just insanely good, and the game becomes a lot more fun when you use that primarily as opposed to your, your belly attack. I don't think I need this rock, but let's try it anyway. You know, it does make life easier sometimes, you know, having a uh, semi-long-range projectile. Especially when enemies are below you. Because, you know, it does have a, a nice arc. There we go, and I think that might be... Nope, I misjudged that. It's okay, not a big deal. I thought we were at the end of the level. Yeah, just dropped. I literally, literally landed like right on top of him, and I had to time my jump kick correctly, but if you do it, man, it feels really good. You just start mowing through these enemies. He's probably gonna be a devil. Yeah, when they turn into angels, they will respawn. And, um, you know, if they turned into an angel previously, they have a chance of turning into a devil afterwards. And interestingly, you actually don't get any points for those guys until you kill them in devil form. So, kind of a deceiving enemy. Which I guess makes sense with, you know, devil form being part of the concept. Oh, 
All right, we're gonna take this top route here. Always have that jump kick handy. Go back this way, just get some extra items and stuff like that. I've got five lives, I've I've lost one. Was it just one or did I lose two lives? I don't remember. Um So yeah, we're actually in, in pretty good shape in terms of extra lives. Uh we do have the final boss coming up. And I think I actually did this wrong. Uh, as far as I'm aware, it's not possible to jump over these guys, so you need to actually set your stone down and then be on the stone and jump at just the right time uh, to get over those guys without taking damage. But there's still a lot of stuff in this game that is requires uh, particular setups like that, that like this, that also required a rock that I didn't have. Uh, so there's still stuff like that in this game that I'm not quite used to yet. I haven't practiced it enough, so... All right, this is our final boss. Uh, so this guy is kind of interesting. You almost are like sort of having a boxing match with him. Um, but he does this forward uh, chomp attack and you need to just constantly be moving backwards. And then you'll hopefully dodge his attack. And then you just kind of like smack him in the face a bunch of times afterwards and then Hopefully you can rinse and repeat that that whole pattern. Uh, when I first got there, I just got wrecked by that guy. It felt like he was completely random. I was like, oh great, more Western crappy game design. Um, but I had to look up a long play and see how the person did it. And he was just going wild with his jump kicks. And I was like, oh, okay, let me try that. And uh, yeah, you just, the trick is to constantly move your character back and forth midair. You do have midair control in this game. And, uh, you know, as you're moving to the left, uh, he'll do his attack and it'll whiff because you're moving to the left. And then that'll give you an opening to smack him a bunch of times. So it's, it's kind of hard to explain. You just have to kind of do it and, and hope it works. Um, but it starts to make more sense when, um, when, when you get it. So actually, the story of this game is uh, this guy named Gary comes and steals your wife. Um, and at the end of this fight, he gets crushed by the T-Rex. You can actually, um, you can see him crushed in the background near his, uh, heart, heart-shaped trousers. Um, heart pattern trousers, so. The Sega CD version, uh, has the intro from the Amiga game. Uh, it's not quite as smooth as the Amiga intro, but it's basically the same thing. Um, and, uh, so you actually get to see, like, you know, uh, you know, animation, and you hear voiceover and stuff like that. It's kind of cool. Uh, definitely dated. It's not nearly as high quality as the Chuck Rock 2 intro on Sega CD, but um, still pretty cool. But this is the only time you see Gary crushed. Um, there is no, like, introduction in this game. There's probably bits of the story in the instruction manual that I don't have in front of me. But, um, yeah. So that's, that's kind of what's going on with the, the backstory in this game. But yeah, that was Chuck Rock, guys. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this playthrough. It uh, wasn't too long, it was just a little over 30 minutes. And i um, glad to have finally gotten this one out. Again, I learned this uh, again back in uh, early November. And afterwards I learned some other core design games like Wonder Dog, uh, Chuck Rock 2, um, and uh, Wolf Child. So you guys will probably expect those, uh, or should expect those as quick plays sometime in the very near future. So now that I've got Chuck Rock out of the way, I will do my best to try to uh, get some of the other ones knocked out as well. Although some of them are a little bit longer, like Wonder Dog I think takes like an hour and a quarter to get through, and that's without dying really. So uh, Wolf Child is, is, is pretty decent though. Uh, pretty, pretty decently length, I mean. Uh, I do have some choice words for certain parts of that game, but uh, I think that's about a half an hour long as well. So maybe that'll be the next one. And then Chuck Rock 2, I don't think is very long either. Maybe it's about 30 minutes as well. Uh, so maybe I'll save Wonder Dog for last. Um, but uh, yeah, stay tuned for those videos. Again, sorry for the uh, delay in quick plays. It's been a, a weird two months for me. Um, 
between motivation issues and getting sick and not feeling well and not having energy and blah 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 blah. Don't want to spend the last part of this video complaining about my life too much, but uh, yeah, I'm feeling okay now, so I, th I think I've got it in me to knock out some of these quick plays. So uh, thanks for the continued support, guys. I really appreciate it, and thanks for being patient. And uh, yeah, I guess until the next one, uh, take it easy, and there will be a next one. <laughs> take care, everybody.